put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. How great a cover is this? Darkman Moo Review. Peyton Westlake is a scientist on the verge of a breakthrough in synthetic skin. Unfortunately, certain situations arise which lead to him being attacked by mobsters. They burn his hands on, I don't know what those are called, El electro sparkly thingies. And they give him one mean nuclear swirly with both his face and his hands gone. They... Yeah, I suppose I shouldn't give that away, actually. He is found by some doctors, or he is brought to a hospital, rather, where they manage to remove the pain of it, at the very least. Unfortunately, this means that he goes insane because comic book logic. The, the explanation is something like the, there, there is no longer any physical sensation. You know, he lost all sense of touch. And so the brain, starved for input, goes to the emotions, which is the only other input it now has access to, and augments them massively. This also means that he has incredible strength, and I suppose also speed, but I'm not entirely sure they say that, because of these massive bursts of adrenaline. And so he becomes Dark Man, out to get revenge for, or justice, I suppose you could call it, for what was done to him. And yeah, this movie is awesome. It's it was, it's directed by Sam Raimi, and basically, around this time, around the time this movie was made, he really wanted to do a superhero movie. This was, what, 12 years before he got to do, direct Spider-Man, and watching this movie, you can understand why he got to direct Spider-Man. He couldn't really get the rights to an actual superhero an established comic book, so he made up Dark Man. And you can really tell that he wanted to do a proper comic book movie. I actually, I frankly, vastly prefer this movie. Can you use that? Like that? Anyway. To any of the his three Spider-Man movies. The... I suppose the comic bookness is really a good place to start. One thing he especially wanted to do with it was make it dynamic like a comic book. And he really succeeded. This is one of the most visually fascinating movies of Sam Raimi's. And I have watched, I'd say, 
at least over half of what he's done, what he's directed. And it just really allows him to go nuts, just let loose and do everything visually interesting that he wants to do, and, and that works for it. We, we have montages. It's, if, if you watched Spider-Man, that one montage where Peter is designing the suit, there's, there's much more of that in this. And the whole movie is actually kind of like that. The whole movie is at least very visually interesting and dynamic is a really good word for it. There is... The, the way they use the camera, the movement of camera and framing, a lot of this is Sam Raimi, who has a really good sense of this kind of thing. Another is that they got Bill Pope to do the cinematography. And if that name doesn't ring a bell to you, how about this? The Three Matrix movies. Yeah, that was him. That was his cinematography. And you can really tell. Every single... I, I defy anyone to find a shot in this movie that is not interesting in some way. The, the movement of the camera, the framing, the... And, and they do all these different things with it. Something will move into frame, or the, the frame will move to get something. There, there's this... During the attack on Peyton's lab, they have Peyton sort of POV style turn all the way around himself. And every, and, and so I guess it's four times, basically, and every single time he turns, yeah, yeah, four 90 degree turns, and every time he turns 90 degrees, he sees something else that is in some way in relation to the attack, and it just works incredibly well, and it really, it's effective, it's not just that it looks really good, which is of course something important for a visual medium, but it also makes you feel like he's surrounded. There's nowhere to go. And the whole movie is like this. Every single scene... The movie has you for the 86 minutes, not counting the credits, that it, that it has a running time of. There is no part of it where you're really allowed to escape it, kind of. You're, you're Sam Raimi's... If, if Sam Raimi is a cat, you are a mouse and he has you by the tail. And he's not gonna just... He, he's gonna toy around with you for 86 minutes. That's basically it. Every single scene, you are completely in the mood of... Uh, you, you completely understand what the characters are going through. You feel like you're going through it yourself. There's some really great... The, the movie moves really fast. It, again, I feel like I, I have to say that... That sounds a little weird to even have to say that for a movie that's you know, less than an hour and a half long, but still, there are plenty of movies. I've seen movies that are 20 minutes shorter than this, and that drag, so... It just never stops moving, this thing. It... I don't know what it's on, but I want some. And one of the things that works really well in making it, in, in keeping it moving, and keeping it really tense, is some of the... It, it has one very effective ticking clock that is actually not used as much as you might think, but the synthetic skin that he is developing, it kind of works, but it just... It has a time limit, 99 minutes, and then it starts literally melting, just 
completely, really disgusting, really nasty looking. You can tell this is the evil dead guy. And basically, that, I'm, I'm not sure how much I should give away, but he uses the synthetic skin. Excuse me. Once he emerges as the dark man, and that's a really effective ticking clock. Whatever he's doing, he has to make sure to be done before ninety nine minutes. And he'll like he'll he'll look at his watch. He he has a a, a timer, and. You'll, you'll see that it's getting close to 99 minutes, and it really keeps it moving. There, there are some incredibly tense scenes in this, and it's also very subversive. It, it keeps you guessing. There, you, you think that you know what you're looking at, and suddenly it just reveals that that was not at all what it appeared to be. I guess I really should reveal just one thing. This is not a big, it's not a spoiler. Basically, Peyton's tactic as Darkman, since he can build this, these synthetic skin, you know, he's, he's trying to recreate his own face, but he can also make a, a mask out of the synthetic skin of other people, including the monsters who came after him. And so he can kind of infiltrate, and yeah, I, I really should not give away anything more than that, but it's just awesome. And it's something that really isn't, we, we've seen vigilante stories so many times, and we've seen comic book stories that have vigilantism plenty. So, it needs a hook, and that's, that's it. He goes in and disguises himself effectively as those he is fighting, and uses that. The... I should talk a bit more about the look. I again have to return to what Sam Raimi wanted to do with this. He also wanted to make a sort of an homage to the old Universal monster movies. And that really comes through in this. It has a very very dark, gothic look to it. There are some very... It, it comes through in sets and the use of shadow and darkness. It, this, this movie uses shadows really well. And in that, there is some sort of Batman-ish stuff in there through that. That's unavoidable, really. And it also doesn't really feel like a rip-off so much as an homage. It, uh, and... Yeah, it just has this very dark... and... Uh, very cold look to it. The, I should perhaps say, this is a somewhat campy film with the, you know, it, it has that in common with the, the Spider-Man movies he did. And th there are some people who are going to be th thrown off completely by that. And I, I can't really blame them. It definitely is. Some of the one-liners they give Dark Man are a bit, as well as the main bad guy Durant. He also has some, but but other than that, 
that the dialogue is not... The, the dialogue is pretty good overall, I'd say. It's, it's really only in the one-liners that it gets genuinely sort of... It can't be. And that does bring me nicely into the character of Durant. I... The, the, the character is played by Larry Drake. And I very much recommend watching this movie if you've seen episodes of L.A. Law where he is featured as Benny something, Stolwich, some, something like that. Because the, the dichotomy is overwhelming, you cannot... If I didn't know that this was the same guy, I wouldn't have guessed. In fact, I first watched this when, when I, in fact, I first watched this movie when I was 12, which is just about the perfect age to watch this movie. And a few years later, I watched, and, and by the way, the movie edged itself into my mind. And it's sites like the burning off of the skin off Westlake's hands. Yeah, that stayed in my mind for quite some time. So it's not like I wouldn't, I shouldn't have been able to recognize him. And then when I, years later, watched L.A. Law, I, I saw that character several times, and I just, before I looked up one of, one of the other on um, IMDb, I did not know that that was the same guy. But Larry Drake really kind of underplays the role as this, the, the mob boss, excuse me, excuse me, Robert G. Durant, who, you, you can tell that he is one vicious SOB. In fact, his introduction, which is the very first scene in the movie, does a great job of communicating that. You do not want to get on this guy's bad side. And in spite of this nature of his, he doesn't show it very much at all. So you can tell that right underneath the surface, there is a monster and he's not, he's not even that evil-looking. He, he can be menacing, but when you just look at him, you don't think, well, that's the bad guy. And the, the fact that there's clearly something worse underneath is really effective, very intimidating. And... When he does raise his voice, you are just scared out of your mind of this guy. And there, there are some really great mobsters, sort of goons of his as well. There, there's, what is it, Rick, I think, who's like the, he, he's, it's Ted Raimi, and he's actually Durant's favorite, in spite of being Ted Raimi. But, yeah, he's... There's, there's this quality to him, I can't quite put it into words. He just has a sort of... He's much more intimidating than you would offhand think Ted Raimi be. You, you wouldn't think he had it in him. And there's this guy called Smiley, who's constantly like smiling and just grinning like an idiot. 
He actually has a little bit, you know, the, the Disney Lion King, the hyenas, or especially that one, I don't remember its name, but there's one of them that just constantly grin. It's kind of like that. I should talk about Peyton himself. The, I, the acting in general, actually, just to cover that, is quite good. I don't think there's really anyone who is asked to do more <coughs> excuse me, than they are well within, the, the, more than what is well within their means. Actually, Frances McDormand also, uh, she plays Peyton's wife, and she is really, really good. And with the, with him have, sorry, wife, girlfriend, and with there being that kind of, he, he had something to lose. It's not only that, He's, he's not just uh, this scientist, he actually has something to really, something to come home to, something to be really, really happy about in his personal life. And she doesn't know that he survived. She thinks that he died. They actually have the, the, probably the world's soonest funeral is like the day after or something. I think it's just because they really wanted to do a nice fade between her standing in front of the blown up building to the her her standing in at, at the cemetery. And the Yeah the they, they blow up the place as well and cover their tracks. Anyway, the, the, the girlfriend adds the... He, he loses something by this attack on him. He, he can't just go back and be with her because the 99 minutes and it, they actually do this really great thing, this, this sort of, and this is again, this is very much where the classic monster movie thing comes in, the, the misunderstood monster, they, they do that with the character of Peyton, and Neeson plays it fantastically. And he's actually also really, really terrifying when he is threatening goons and the like. They, they have a sort of... Phantom of the Opera kind of thing going on with him. And so he, he's looking on from the shadows on the, the real world, the, the world he used to be a part of until it was taken from him. And he resents that he can no longer be a part of the real world. And there's actually, you, you'd think just the, all, all the stuff already going on, mob search, revenge, and his, his tactics, you'd think that would easily take up these 86 minutes, but they actually fit in a really effective arc to Peyton's character with... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to give anything away. It's just there, there are the different stages to how he, he's, he's trying to deal with what has happened to him. And also the, the look of the character, as you can see on the cover at the start of this, also inspired by old horror 
movie, uh, old monsters, classic monsters, with the this is, so sort of gauze around his face, just not covering his eyes, or covering his entire face except for his eyes, similar to something like the Invisible Man, and actually I suppose that about covers it, but yeah, it has that to it, and then he's got the, what do you call that kind of hat? Anyway, he's got the hat, he's got the, the overcoat, and he looks very imposing, and you could see how this guy could disappear into the shadows. The music by Danny Elfman is fantastic, really bombastic, really big, and really fitting how it just, yeah, the, the various moods that the movie goes through. I, I mentioned the visuals before. The music, excuse me, complements those every step of the way. The, excuse me, excuse me, and in general, the sound design. And the editing is phenomenal. Actually, I read on IMDb that this, the, the editing of this had the editor go through a nervous breakdown. I can understand why. I would not have wanted that job, especially on like an analog system. And yeah, don't don't worry, it's a, a technical thing. And yeah, the I suppose that might more or less cover it. The story is quite well thought out. Pretty much every step of it makes sense. I can't really think of any plot holes. And like I said, there are some really nice twists along the way. There are a lot of things that you did not anticipate. And the a lot of things happen so early or so suddenly that you don't expect it to really happen quite like that and suddenly it's happening. They, they really went through every, every scene and tried to make it interesting in some way, tried to keep it moving. Even the... Even, even scenes that you'd think would be kind of cliche, they do something to make them interesting. Near the end of the movie, it looks like it's going to be typical, a, a scene that you've seen so many times before, and it has this... I, I won't give away what it is, but there's, there's a certain aspect of it which makes it interesting and keeps it different from all those other. The effects are quite good. They hold up very well. They have aged very well. The only real exception is near the climax of the movie. Admittedly, there is some stuff that you, you can tell that it's not real, and it just is, the movie was made 22 years ago, and it, that is the only time where it really, I mean, the, the melting skin and the, like I said, the, the burning off of the, the skin on the hands and all this stuff, and you do get to see the, dis the, the partially burnt off face, and not only is the design really good, it's really, really terrifying looking, and really 
convincing. And it's also really impressive that Liam Neeson could actually work with all this, all these prosthetics on his face. And again, keeping in mind, this movie is from 1990, so it's not quite like movies that have come since. I think that covers pretty well I'm thinking. I do want to make one more note about the music. The main theme, Dark Man's main theme, is really haunting. You, it really just keeps it, it. It really is a trip into the dark recesses of the the, the mind. The, and actually, I suppose I haven't really covered the action. It's 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 not the biggest that you may be actually I suppose it it's it has several really big scenes and they're they, yeah there there are actually there are several very inspired scenes. Actually every time I watch this movie because it moves so fast I keep forgetting big things in, for example, the action. It just, it keeps moving so fast. It's, it, anyway, yeah, the, the action is really, really good. It, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. And you really feel like it, You feel like any moment it's gonna, yeah, some, something's gonna go wrong. It, it has that quality to it. In a lot of action movies you kind of end up just watching something that is choreographed nicely or such. In this you really do feel the excitement of it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.